The wedding scene was bustling with excitement. The guests in the audience were cheering, urging the newlyweds to share a kiss. The girl in the wedding dress looked shy, with a hint of blush in her eyes. Alan Roan held the back of her head with one hand, deepening the kiss. I was absent-mindedly watching the passionate kiss between the couple on stage. Alan's best friend turned his head and saw me, panicking as he shouted, Phoebe. In the next second, the previously lively atmosphere instantly quieted down. I walked towards Alan Roan. The young girl clumsily tried to hide behind him. Alan showed no trace of embarrassment from being caught by his fiancé. He teasingly embraced the young girl behind him, raising an eyebrow playfully and saying, Liz wants to marry me. Don't worry, we have no plan to submit the marriage application. So you will be the only one Mrs. Roan. I smiled faintly and took a square brocade box out of my bag. This is the necklace that the Roan family passes down to their daughter-in-law. I'm returning it to you. Alan took it, and with a hint of mockery, he smiled. This time, to make me break up with her. You even brought out the necklace to threaten me? I didn't miss the disbelief in his eyes. Alan Roan, starting from today, our engagement is cancelled. From now on, our lives have nothing to do with each other. Alan's <laughs> expression changed on the spot. Phoebe Wolf, say it again. I ignored him and calmly turned to leave. Meanwhile, Lizzie Cyrus, who had been hiding nearby, saw me walk away, suddenly tugged at Alan's clothes and said, Can I take a look at that necklace? After leaving the wedding, I decided to go to the bar to relax. I saw a man sitting at the bar, dressed in an exquisite suit, with a few buttons of his shirt casually undone. Perhaps sensing my gaze, he frowned and looked over. Cole Bacall? What is he doing here? I walked over, smiling lightly and saying, Mr. Bacall, care for a drink together? He raised an eyebrow and asked, didn't you transform into a well-behaved girl after being with Alan Roan? I didn't say anything. He leaned closer and said in a very provocatively tone. I heard he held a grand wedding for another woman today. So, did you break up with him? I took his glass directly and finished it in one gulp, smirking as I said, Cole, how about coming to my house tonight? Our eyes met. Among adults, these words imply much more than meets the eye. Ding! Wisnevel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. Cole Bacall unlocked the door with my fingerprint, and he pressed me against the doorframe the next second. His large hand held the back of my head and kissed me deeply. Phoebe, you're a dog sign? Be gentle with your bites. I furrowed my brows slightly. Can you stop talking? At this moment, what you should do is to make me lose the energy to speak. The entire night passed. Cole's actions made me understand the consequences of speaking without thinking. It wasn't until dawn that I finally fell asleep, but then my phone rang. I couldn't open my eyes, so I reached out my hand aimlessly on the bed. I heard a soft laugh next to me as Cole found my phone. Seeing that it was a video call sent by Alan Roan, his face immediately turned grim. He handed me the phone and covered me with the blanket up to my collarbone. I reluctantly answered the call, squinting my sleepy eyes. Alan smiled indifferently. Didn't you say that our lives has nothing to do with each other? Why did you go to my mother after just one day and speak ill of Liz? Who went to see your mother? Are you crazy? Why are you bothering me so early in the morning? As soon as I spoke, I froze. My voice sounded hoarse. Confused, Alan asked, are you catching a cold? I smiled and said, what are you pretending not to understand? He realized the meaning behind my words and suddenly raised his voice, getting closer to the phone. Where are you? Who are you with now? Mr. Roan, we have nothing to do with each other anymore. Where I am and who I'm with is none of your business. I was too tired to talk and hung up the video call directly. In the bar, Alan's face turned gloomy. Did Phoebe hang up on your call? Could she really be determined to break off the engagement? How is that possible? This is just her old trick of threatening Alan. If she really wanted to break off the engagement, could she bear to do it? She's obviously acting. Pretending to be with another man to make you jealous, hoping that you can't help but go find her. This trick is so common. Everyone laughed. Alan's face finally improved a bit. The phone call disturbed my original sleepiness. I frowned unhappily. Seeing this, Cole said, What's so good about Alan Roan? 
He played around even before the marriage, and he won't just stay faithful to you after marriage. He's not worthy of you. I looked at him in confusion, what does Mr. Bacall want to say? Cole picked up the candy box from the bedside table, took out a candy, and eat it. He suddenly became serious. When it comes to alliances, the Bacall family is not inferior to the Rowan family. What does you mean? Cole glanced at me. I know you've always wanted to win the project in the Eastern District. But it won't be easy for you to do it alone. If we get married and work together, it will be much easier. By now, I was completely awake. With the capabilities of the Bacall family, you can easily do it on your own. Why do you want to share the credit with me? Maybe I don't want you to sleep with me for free? I couldn't help but smile. After a few seconds of contemplation, I reached out my right hand. Let's cooperate happily. Forty minutes later, Cole and I walked out of the Civil Affairs Bureau. Looking at the red marriage certificate in my hand, I felt a sense of confusion. Let's go. Huh? Are we meeting clients now? Cole raised his hand and patted my hair, chuckling, honeymoon. We changed into our diving equipment and immersed ourselves in the azure waters, feeling the mystery and beauty of the sea. Beautiful coral reefs and schools of fish that we could reach out and touch. Cole gestured to me to follow as we descended. At a certain depth, when we looked up, we saw a sea of stars beneath the water. Once we were back on land, the staff informed me that my phone had been ringing non-stop. I opened my phone and dozens of messages popped up. Miss Wolf, I'm the manager of the bridal shop. When will you have time to come and try on wedding dresses? Miss Wolf, I'm in charge of wedding planning. What kind of flowers do you like? We can airship them over when the time comes. Miss Wolf, Mr. Roan has ordered a diamond ring for you at our store. When will you have time to come and try it on? We can adjust the size if it doesn't fit. Wedding dresses? Flowers? Rings? The more I read, the more furrowed my brows became. Has my phone number been leaked? At that moment, my phone rang again. I glanced at the screen and saw that it was a call reminder from Alan Roan. He started off with a questioning tone. Where have you been? I've been calling you so many times, but you never answered. The company said you took a month off. What does it have to do with you where I've been? Don't forget, we've already broken up. Alan didn't seem to mind. Instead, he laughed. Aren't you mad at me because I organized a wedding for Lizzie Cyrus? I'll organize one for you too. You should have received messages and calls about it. Take a look at the wedding dress and venue you like, and just tell them directly. They'll arrange everything for you. I felt speechless. Are you out of your mind? Although I couldn't see his expression, I could imagine Alan's reaction to my words. Phoebe Wolf, you threw a fit because of the wedding, and now I'm promising to arrange a wedding for you. What else do you want? Are you not done throwing a fit? Let me tell you, this is your only chance. If you don't want to get married, then don't ever get married. Alan Roan was always like this. As long as he gave you an opportunity, if you didn't seize it in time, it would be your fault. You crazy person. We've already broken up, so stop calling me. Marry whoever you want to marry. Alan replied with three fine on the other end of the phone. Phoebe Wolf, I gave you a chance, and you rejected it yourself. Don't regret it. What a lunatic. Cole changed his clothes and glanced at me. Was it Alan Roan on the phone? I took a deep breath. Yes, he thought I was mad because of a wedding, so he wants to arrange one for me too. How did I ever fall for this man? Cole smiled and didn't say anything. The next month, we went to Iceland to see the mysterious blue ice caves. We took a hot air balloon ride in Turkey. On the day I returned to the country, Mary asked me to go out. I applied several layers of concealer, but it couldn't hide the love marks on my collarbone. I had to find a scarf from the wardrobe and tie it around my neck. As soon as she sat down, she downed two glasses of wine. I'm so furious. Alan Roan is absolutely insane. He rented all the electronic screens in the capital city and had A-list stars record birthday greetings for that person named Lizzie Cyrus. And he wants to play it on loop for a month. Hasn't he considered your feelings? I held my glass and calmly replied, I'm married. At first, Mary didn't believe it until she saw the marriage certificate. You married Cole Bacall? I assent he notorious for not being interested in women? How did you manage to win him over? That's not important. What's important is that Alan Roan is incomparable to him. 
I really want to see his expression when he finds out you're married to Cole Bacall. She brushed off her anger from earlier. We should celebrate this. Tonight, it's on me. Mary couldn't handle much alcohol and got dizzy after a few bottles. I put down my glass and said, stay here honestly, I'll go out and get you a cup of sobering tea. In the corridor, I ran into Rick, Alan's best friend. He approached me eagerly, Phoebe, you're here. Alan is in private room number six. Alan Roan and I have nothing to do with each other anymore. Have fun with him. Rick acted as if I hadn't cooled down yet. What Alan did was indeed excessive. Just give him a chance to apologize in person. Weary in private room number six. I'll go first. Phoebe, you can come over later. To get to private room number three, I had to pass by private room number six. I heard a familiar voice. I stood at the doorway and looked through the crack. Alan Roan lazily leaned against the sofa, with several buttons of his shirt undone. Sitting next to him, Lizzie Cyrus had swollen lips. Anyone with eyes could tell what had happened. Alan, I just saw Phoebe at the door. I knew she couldn't let you go. I didn't expect Phoebe Wolf to hold on for so long without contacting you. It's only been a month. When she heard that you were celebrating another woman's birthday, she couldn't bear it and came over. Alan's face turned cold. Who let her come? We've already broken up. Enough already. This is the first time Phoebe Wolf hasn't contacted you for so long, right? Be careful not to escalate the situation. Yeah. Alan, I think you should make this woman leave quickly, so that Phoebe won't get angry later. Alan glanced at the obedient Lizzie Cyrus by his side. She lowered her head and spoke softly, Mr. Roan, today is my birthday. I touched the scarf tied around my neck, took it off, and pushed the door open. Everyone's gaze turned towards me at the same time. The love marks on my neck were too obvious, even in the dim lighting of the bar, Alan still noticed. He stood up abruptly, squinting his eyes. What's on your neck? Thinking about how Cole left marks on me like a mad dog last night. I smiled and said, kisses, marks. Alan kicked the nearby table with his foot, and the shadow in his eyes became evident. Who did it? Phoebe Wolf, you went out behind my back to find another man, didn't you? What does it have to do with you, Alan Roan? A qualified ex should be as good as dead. He sneered, Phoebe Wolf, if I ever contact you again, I'm a dog. After drinking the sobering tea, Mary asked me. Why did you go away for so long? I almost went out to find you. Hearing the sound of things being smashed in the adjacent private room, I casually replied, I took care of something. Otherwise, there would always be flies buzzing around, which is quite annoying. Let's go. Both of us had been drinking, so we called a designated driver. Not long after, the college student who married Alan Roan entered the entertainment industry. After achieving some success, she actually hired internet trolls to comment on the Wolf Group's official account. Mr. Roan treats Lizzie differently. He's willing to hold a grand wedding for her. I advise someone to part ways amicably instead of stubbornly holding on to the title of Mr. Roan's fiancé. The one who is not loved is the third party. Can Mr. Roan and Lizzie Cyrus really be together until death? The assistant handed me the tablet. Boss. Should we delete all the comments that are manipulating public opinion? Find some dirt on Lizzie Cyrus and inform the media companies that have cooperated with the Wolf Group not to provide her with any resources. All right, boss. I'll do it right away. But what if Mr. Roan wants to get involved? Don't worry about him. Just focus on the tasks I've assigned to you. An hour later, the comment section of Lizzie Cyrus was overwhelmed. You, a third party, not only hide behind the scenes, but also dare to openly provoke the original owner. Lizzie Cyrus and I were classmates. She may seem gentle on the surface, but she used her family's wealth to bully me at school. I have many scars on my arms from her burns. The most despicable one is Alan Roan. He changes girlfriends every few days. This kind of man should have died long ago. Alan, aren't you answering your girlfriend's calls? She's being heavily criticized by netizens. Phoebe Wolf is still the same, seeking revenge against everyone except you. Alan didn't answer that question. He asked instead, Has Phoebe called any of you in the past few days? They exchanged glances and said, No. Are you intentionally favoring Lizzie Cyrus and use her to provoke Phoebe? I think your plan is off. The news about you and Lizzie Cyrus has been spreading. Has Phoebe called you? 
Alan, if you really want to reconcile with Phoebe, why don't you make a compromise and give her a call? There's nothing to lose. What if someone else beats you to it? Let her be. If she wants to break up, it doesn't make a difference to me. That night, I received a message from Mary. By the way, I forgot to mention that there are rumors in the industry that Cole Bacall is attracted to men. Is that true? I couldn't help but smile when I saw the message. Before I could reply, a dark shadow fell over me. Attracted to men? I looked up and met Cole's ambiguous gaze. Let's give it a try tonight. Can I satisfy you? Before I could react, he was already on the bed. Perhaps it was the effect of the alcohol, but I felt my cheeks burning. When desire peaked, I lowered my head and bit his shoulder. Rain poured heavily outside the window, while ambiguity filled the room. The phone on the bedside table kept ringing tirelessly. After we finished, Cole picked up the phone and glanced at it. It's Alan Roan calling. Do you want to answer? My eyes turned red, and I shook my head. Alan, he clings to you like a plaster. It hurts me. Then you answer it. I don't know if it was just my imagination, but I could sense a hint of triumph in his eyes. As soon as the call connected, Alan's drunken voice came through. Phoebe, I've had too much to drink. Can you come pick me up? I've been acting crazy these past few days. Why haven't you come to take care of me? Cole sneered, it's me. There was silence on the other end of the line for a few seconds, and then I heard Alan gritting his teeth. Cole Bacall, you shameless person, being a third party. We are legally married. What about you? Why are you calling my wife in the middle of the night? That's impossible. He suddenly lowered his voice. Phoebe, can you come pick me up? Let's not fight anymore. I forced myself to stay composed. Alan Roan, I've already made it clear to you today. Yuri just my ex-boyfriend. Cole raised an eyebrow, satisfied. Without giving the other person a chance to speak, he hung up the phone directly. Meanwhile, at the bar. Since ending the call, Alan had been frozen in place. I think Phoebe Wolf probably won't come back this time. It's not entirely her fault. Alan, you've gone too far these past few years. It's one thing to have secret relationships, but every time you make a big scene. Not to mention marrying Lizzie Cyrus, you even gave a ring to the previous celebrity and your former secretary, caused a scene at the Wolf Group. If I were Phoebe Wolf, I would have left you a long time ago. There's no way I'd wait until now. Enough. Stop talking. It's good thing for you to break up with her. Besides, you don't even like Phoebe Wolf. Alan Roan didn't say anything. He grabbed the car keys and left. No one could catch up with him. He's drunk. He can't drive. He's probably going to find Phoebe. And now Cole Bacall is there too. It looks like there's going to be a fight. Phoebe, I want to post our relationship on social media. At this moment, Cole was completely different from his usual self, so damn charming. I nodded without thinking. Just one minute after posting, there were already several comments below. Congratulations. You finally got what you wanted. But does Phoebe Wolf know that you've been thinking about her for so many years? Oh my god. Why does this person look so familiar? I assent this Alan Rohn's fiancé? What's going on? Cole replied to a few comments and then went to take a shower. I heard urgent knocking downstairs, so I covered my head with the blanket, pretending not to hear. But the knocking sound became louder and more persistent, as if they wouldn't give up without me opening the door. I went downstairs, wearing a black silk nightgown and knew who was knocking at the door. So I took out the marriage certificate from the cabinet. I opened the door, my face still flushed. Alan Roan was drenched in rain. Phoebe, I won't mess around anymore. Let's reconcile. I didn't think much at that time. I just thought it was just a wedding and it wouldn't threaten your position as my fiancé, so I agreed. I leaned against the doorframe weakly and showed him the marriage certificate in my hand. I've registered, we just need to have the wedding ceremony. On the day of our wedding ceremony, we must invite Mr. Roan to join and have a drink. Cole came downstairs with only a towel wrapped around his lower body and hugged my waist. Alan raised his hand and threw a punch. I treated you as a friend, yet you still had thoughts about Phoebe Wolf. Cole grabbed his collar and returned a punch. Do you not know how much trouble you caused yourself? She endured you for five years, and during these five years, you gradually pushed her away. The two of them exchanged blows, neither willing to back down. Alan Roan stood in the rain, his eyes moist. Phoebe, I'm drunk. 
Can you cook me a bowl of sobering soup? Cole cursed. With a loud bang, the door was slammed shut. He pressed me against the door, while Alan continued to knock on the door frantically from outside. Phoebe, let's have a wedding. I want a status. When you got engaged with Alan Roan, you had such a grand ceremony. Our wedding ceremony must be even better. I tiptoed and planted a kiss on his lips. Okay. The next day, I received a call from Rick. Alan Roan had crashed his car into a guardrail when he was driving home last night. The front of the car was completely wrecked, but fortunately, he wasn't seriously injured and is now in the hospital. Phoebe, can you come and see him? He's not eating or drinking anything now, and he won't cooperate with the doctors or take his medicine unless he sees you. How many phone numbers do you have? He hesitated for a moment and said, just this one. I hung up and immediately blocked his number. Why did Alan Roan, instead of finding his parents or his current girlfriend, come looking for me, his already married ex-fiancé? Rick showed him the black screen of his phone. Alan, Phoebe really doesn't want you anymore. She just blocked my number as well. Alan stared at the chat box with dark eyes, not saying a word. Later, when no one was around, he left the hospital directly. Lately, I've been busy with the development project in the Eastern District. On this day, when I returned to the apartment to get some files, I unexpectedly saw Alan Roan sitting by the flower bed downstairs in the community, still wearing a patient's gown. He saw me and walked over, cautiously calling out, Phoebe. I wearily pressed my temples. What do you want, exactly? Perhaps due to his illness, he looked somewhat weak. Cole Bacall did it on purpose. He had his eye on you long ago. He wanted to break us up so that he could take advantage of the situation. Do you remember back in school when someone put love letters in your school bag? Were you angry about it? That person was Cole Bacall. What? Cole was so aloof in school that no one dared to approach him or ask for his contact information. And he was the one who put those love letters in my school bag? He was jealous that we were engaged, so he deliberately framed me. So, are you saying that he forced you to date those female celebrities and college students? Did he force you to have a wedding? Alan lowered his gaze. Avoiding this topic. Phoebe, I caught a cold from being in the rain last night. I feel really uncomfortable now. Can I go upstairs to get a drink of water? No, I'm already married. I took out my phone and dialed Alan's mother's number. After she arrived, she couldn't help but give him a slap. Why are you still here making a fool of yourself? Look at the things you've done before. I can't face Phoebe's parents anymore. Get out of here quickly. Mrs. Roan, I have a few important meetings later, so I'll leave now. Fine. Go busy yourself. I'll get rid of this brat right away. I politely nodded, turned around, and left. I didn't expect that when I came back, Alan Roan was still sitting here. He was wearing a thin patient's gown, and everyone passing by couldn't help but look at him. He didn't care and just stared at the entrance of the community. When he saw my car drive in, he immediately stood up. I took a deep breath. I didn't want to pay attention to him, but as I walked forward, he stopped me and handed me back the jewelry box I had returned to him. I never intended to give this necklace to anyone else. Please take it back. I smiled and opened my phone to find a photo. It was a selfie of Lizzie Cyrus wearing this necklace. Alan hurriedly explained, when you left that day, she said she wanted to try it on, so I gave it to her. She just tried it on briefly. I didn't want to waste any more words with him and shook off his hand, walking upstairs. When Kolbakal came back, I saw the two of them talking for a moment from upstairs, and the next second, they started fighting. I quickly went downstairs. Kolbakal, you are not much better than me. Do you dare to tell Phoebe about all the things you've done? I may have cheated, but you had a hand in it too. That project in the Eastern District was just a scheme you set up for her. Damn your collaboration. Phoebe, don't let him deceive you. Cole nervously glanced at me. I held his hand, our fingers intertwining. Then I handed the wedding invitation in my hand to Alan Roan. The 8th of next month is the day of my wedding with Cole. You are welcome to attend. Back in the room, Cole was still absent-minded. I had never seen him like this before. He explained, Alan Roan was right about some things. I knew you wanted the project in the Eastern District, so I deliberately used it as a pretext to marry you. He cheated because I signaled the manager at the banquet to bring the type of girl he likes in front of him. I'm not as good as you think I am. 
I'm good at manipulating people's hearts. I know what kind of person Alan Rowan is. Even if it wasn't for you, it wouldn't be long before he got tired of that kind of life and asked for a divorce. Cole froze, you're not blaming me? I chuckled softly, of course not. I married you after careful consideration. Only young girls only consider love. I watched as Cole's tense nerves gradually relaxed. The East District project started smoothly. The preparations for my wedding with Cole are also underway. On this day, while I was contemplating whether to use all chocolate for the wedding candies or a variety of sugar cubes, a notification popped up on my phone. Your friend is live streaming. Curiously, I clicked into it. Alan Rowan was kneeling on the ground in a sorry state, with torn pants on his knees. With each step he took, he said, I'm sorry, Phoebe Wolf. One step, one apology. It reminded me of something he said when we first started dating. If I ever betray you, I will kneel step by step until I reach the mount. Witnessing this bizarre scene, I remained silent for a minute. I quickly called him, but Alan Rohn didn't answer. The barrage of comments flooded the screen. After all, there aren't many opportunities to witness the CEO of Rohn Group in such a pathetic state. Late affection is as cheap as grass. What's the point of pretending now? A few days ago, you were hot with a female star. Now you suddenly remember your fiancé? Phoebe Wolf's current husband is much more handsome than CEO Roan, with an 8-pack. I watched the man in the video rejecting the phone call. If he were to kneel step by step up the mount, it would take at least a whole day and night. But most importantly, it would be too embarrassing. He kept apologizing to Phoebe Wolf. Then Rick called. Phoebe, although Alan has done wrong to you, he is currently running a fever and hasn't fully recovered. Can you show him some pity and give him a call? If you have time to call me, why not bring a few people and knock him out, then take him to the hospital directly? And so, Alan Rohn continued to kneel step by step, ignoring the gazes of others, refusing to answer any calls, ignoring any advice. Rick and the others couldn't do anything about it, so they had no choice but to let him be. Alan Rohn reached the summit the next evening. Due to exhaustion, he fainted and was carried down by doctors. When I received a call from Alan Rohn's mother, I was with my own mother finalizing the details of the wedding. Phoebe, I really have no face to come and see you, but Alan wants to see you now. Neither of us can persuade him. My mother gestured for me to give her the phone. My daughter is getting married now, so it might not be convenient for her to meet your son. How about this, I'll send my son-in-law over. They know each other and used to be good friends. Maybe it will work. Alan's mother sighed. Ah, if Cole Bacall were to come, it would probably stimulate him even more. Let's forget it. No, it won't. As the ancients say, fight fire with fire. It's settled then. I'll have Cole go over in a bit. I waited outside the hospital room while Alan Rohn met Cole. It was like enemies meeting, and Alan Rohn seemed particularly resentful. Cole Bacall, I never expected you to plot against me. Ever since the first female star, I walked into the trap you set and couldn't get out. Who can you blame but yourself for not being able to control your desires? It's because of your constant scheming that Phoebe and I ended up like this. Outside, the fragrance of gardenias filled the air. I took a walk around but didn't hear the rest of their conversation. I didn't know what Cole said to Alan Roan. In the next few days, Alan didn't appear in front of me. But I did see Lizzie Cyrus. Phoebe, can I talk to you? She said, keeping her head down and speaking softly. It's hard to associate her with the person who hired internet trolls to attack me on the company's official account. Lizzie Cyrus kept her head down, her fingers constantly intertwined. She didn't speak for a long time, and just as I was about to get up and leave, she finally spoke. I'm pregnant. I took a sip of coffee and responded. What does Miss Cyrus mean by coming to me? The child in your belly can't possibly be mine, right? Lizzie Cyrus looked up in shock. The child is Mr. Rones, but he doesn't want this child. Can you help me persuade him? I don't want anything, and I can return everything he gave me before, as long as he lets me give birth to this child. Miss Cyrus, you've got the wrong person. As a former fiancé, I have no reason to talk to him about this matter. And you don't have to pretend in front of me. Compared to the child and the things Alan Rohn gave you, which one is more important, it's obvious that you know. Lizzie Cyrus suddenly knelt down. But he only has you in his heart and eyes now. 
If it weren't for you, maybe he would let me give birth to this child. His friends all say that I'm special to him, and only I can marry him. Right? He even gave me a ring, which shows that he also had the intention of marrying me. There are too many special people for Alan Roan. Many people have once received his promises. Regarding that ring, if I remember correctly, many people have received an identical one. Lizzie Cyrus couldn't believe it. No, it's impossible, you're lying to me. Everyone says that I've spent the longest time by his side. You must be lying to me. Did Alan Roan promise you that he would give this ring to only one person? Lizzie Cyrus opened her mouth, but found herself unable to argue. You see, he doesn't even want to deal with you. Lizzie Cyrus wanted to say something else. I interrupted her. Miss Cyrus, I hope you won't appear in front of me in the future, and don't come to the company to find me, because we really aren't familiar with each other. Assistant Lily, see the guest out. After Lily escorted her out, she knocked on the door and came in. Boss, don't listen to the nonsense from Lizzie Cyrus. The child in her belly is not Mr. Rones at all. My friend said that ever since she was put on ice by the company, she has been trying every means to re-sign with the company. You should know what methods she used without me saying. I looked up at Lily. You continue to follow up on the East District project. As for the trivial matters, there's no need to report to me. On the day of the wedding, the weather was beautiful. Friends from the circle were all present. Congratulations. I thought you were going to marry Alan Roan, but I didn't expect. Today is Phoebe's wedding day. Why are you talking nonsense here? I think Cole Bacall is much better than that Alan Roan. Mary had always disliked Alan Roan, and on this wedding occasion, she didn't want to hear anyone mention his name. I smiled and didn't pay attention to it. You guys go sit down first. The wedding will start soon. The wedding venue was decorated in a grand and solemn manner. The wedding dress was specially made by a famous designer commissioned by Cole. The gorgeous outer dress was embellished with pearls. After the ceremony, I changed into the toasting attire. Rick gave me the Buddhist beads that Alan Rowan had brought from the mount. Now Alan regrets it so much. If he could do it over again, he said he would definitely cherish you. Rick kept on talking incessantly. He didn't notice the ugly expression on Cole's face. I smiled and separated the two of them. After a busy day, when I got home, I lay on the bed and Cole helped me undress. In the bathroom, with my back against the cold wall, the mist blurred the gaze between me and Cole. He held onto my waist and before I could react, his kisses fell densely and heavily. It is a blessing in life to have someone you truly love.